Whistling. And I'm Craig Jackson, and this is Channel One for Friday, December 11th. Top story, the first casualties of Operation Restore Hope. Two Somali civilians had been shot dead for allegedly running a roadblock. The Somalis were in a truck and failed to stop. French troops opened fire. Seven other Somalis were on the truck and they were injured. U.S. commanders deny reports Americans may have also fired at the truck. Other happenings. The two main Somali warlords in Somalia have agreed to meet. It would be the first meeting since fighting began two years ago. And tomorrow, Marines plan to escort the first land convoy in a month to the city of Baidoa, one of the areas where starvation is the worst. Baidoa is 125 miles northwest of the capital city of Mogadishu. Our Anderson Cooper has just returned from Baidoa. He joins us on our special satellite hookup right now with a report. Anderson, how are you? I'm doing well, Lisa. Uh, let me tell you what's going on. Despite a few instances uh, over the night and early this morning, sporadic gunfire, the U.S. Marines and U.N. forces are firmly in control of the city of Mogadishu. But elsewhere in Somalia, problems still do exist. Yesterday, I went to uh, Baidoa, a city I visited about two months ago, and brought you a report. Uh, here's what I saw. Some things in Baidoa are still just the way I left them. Armed gunmen still roam the streets, and there's still a general sense of chaos. Security is still a problem here in Baidoa. I'm traveling with several bodyguards. The Marines who are going to be arriving either today or tomorrow probably won't be facing any organized opposition, but they will be facing armed gunmen. But there's also some major differences. Gone are the corpses on the sides of the road. And you don't see as many kids with empty eyes and emaciated faces. If you've been watching news reports over the last couple of months, you might get the sense that all the food and aid being sent to Somalia is just going to looters. But the kids behind me are a prime example that food has been getting to those who need it most. There are other reasons why Baidoa has improved, some of them out of the man's control. Another reason things are better here in Baidoa is the rainy season. The rains have come, and as you can see, this well behind me, which was virtually empty the last time I was here, is now full with rainwater. But the town hasn't come back all the way yet, and the city's cemeteries are still filling up. The number of people dying here in Baidoa every day has dropped significantly, but it's still enough to keep gravediggers like the men behind me busy every day. But even as I taped this story in Baidoa's burial ground, I saw something I hadn't seen here before. Dozens of children still at risk of starvation and early death, but smiling and strong enough to enjoy themselves and joke around with me. It's expected that sometime over the weekend, U.S. Marines and U.N. forces will enter Baidoa. I'll be bringing you that story on Monday. Reporting from Mogadishu, I'm Anderson Cooper for Channel One. Anderson, has the shooting changed anyone's mood? Uh, I don't think it's changed anyone's mood. I mean, the people here are still very curious, very, uh, most of them are, 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 for the most part, very happy to see Americans. Um, there, you know, there are still some young kids walking around with weapons. Uh, a lot of them are, are, are chewing cot, which is a, a narcotic. It's the least they chew. Um, but for the most part, people are still very, uh, very curious about us. Uh, is everything okay with you? Uh, yeah, I'm doing okay. You know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm actually out of water and, and uh, haven't had much food. Um, but for the most part, I'm, do I'm doing fine. Anderson, thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Okay. We'll be right back. The happiest moments in life are spent in comfortable clothes. The only kind of clothes Fruit of the Loom makes. Don't you ever ask them why? If they told you you would cry, so just look at them and sigh. Now Comfort has a new dress code. Fruit of the Loom. Clothes for the best of your life. There's a camp where people from all over the country are coming to learn a brand new sport. It's called tennis. Hardcore tennis. Introducing Hardcore by Reebok. Tennis anyone? Political news now. President-elect Bill Clinton has made his first major cabinet appointments. Clinton nominated Texas Senator Lloyd Benson to be his Treasury Secretary. I'll miss my colleagues in the Congress, but I'm comforted by the fact that I'll be representing the President and working for an economic policy to create jobs in this country, to have a more competitive economy, 
and better able to create opportunity in our country. Clinton also picked California Representative Leon Panetta to be his new budget director. There are also rumors that Clinton is considering General Colin Powell, currently the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to be his Secretary of State. More appointments are expected today. Today's top quiz question. The first cabinet was appointed by our nation's first president, George Washington. Two of the men in the first presidential cabinet now appear on U.S. currency. Name them, and we'll be right back. Hold it a second. Okay, class, today's lesson, the limerick, a comedy standard. There once was a girl on the roof whose boyfriend thought she was aloof. She said, Bob, our love hurts. You really need some certs because your breath makes me want to go woof. Get some certs. Want fresh, clean breath? Get certs mini mints with Retson and be certain with certs. Who saw the new Disney movie Aladdin? Who went to Burger King to get the free Aladdin Magic Cup? this place. Burger King celebrates the magic of Disney's Aladdin only in movie theaters. And now when you visit Burger King, you can get an Aladdin magic cup free. I gotta come back so I can collect all four. Hello? When it gets cold, it changes color. And it's free when you order this, one of these, and a 32 ounce soft drink. It's your way right away. I love this place. Here's your pop quiz answer. Thomas Jefferson is on the face of the nickel and the $2 bill, and he was the first ever Secretary of State. He also drafted the Declaration of Independence and became our third president. And Alexander Hamilton's on the $10 bill. He was the first Treasury Secretary under Washington. And now a look at a problem in high schools across our country, steroids. Thousands of teenagers are taking them, shooting them, swallowing them, thinking steroids will help make them better athletes. But as Hicks Neal shows us, steroids can be dangerous and possibly deadly. Ben Johnson used them. The only way I'm going to be the best is to take it. Lyle Alzado used them. I was big and powerful, but I paid the great price for it. Is the price worth it? I don't think so. We're talking about anabolic steroids, performance-enhancing drugs. It's estimated over half a million teenagers have used these drugs for sports and to improve their appearance. They're illegal and they're dangerous to use. And the most frightening part? There's no research about the long-term health effect they may have on your body. Very conscious on that. This is Steve Corson, football coach at Channel One's Trinity High School in Washington, Pennsylvania. He knows steroids. He may be dying because of them. This was Steve Corson several years ago as a Pittsburgh Steeler, two-time Super Bowl champion, 300 pounds of offensive lineman, able to bench press twice his weight. He took drugs to compete, to give him an edge. It started in college, anabolic steroids prescribed by the team physician. It was a well-known thing that was happening at that time in especially the power sports. And, uh, I experienced uh, what many athletes have experienced with these drugs, a dramatic um, ability to train and to make uh, gains. It became a necessity during his pro career. He stacked the steroids using four or five at a time, pills and shots in cycles of 13 weeks. I can rationalize and say, well, that was my job. People were, um, I was playing against, were using them. You know, there's, when you have a hall of victory, there's there's really not a whole lot of worth to it. In 1985, he went public about the widespread use of steroids in the NFL. Tell me what happened to your name as soon as you went public with this. Were you blacklisted? Were you accepted? Well, all I knew was uh, after I came out in Sports Illustrated and talked about this, that uh, I received an awful lot of uh, uh, negativism. And I know my last year, which I played clean, um, I had one of my better seasons and uh, found myself out of football. You think you could have played longer if you'd have kept Without, your mouth shut? Um, there's no question about it. But his problems had just begun. He became sick. Doctors diagnosed cardiomyopathy, an enlarged heart. He was 33 years old. They gave him five years to live without a heart transplant. It was suspicious of the steroid use. 
Uh, I had a heavy drinking problem, and uh, I knew I had to, to change my lifestyle. I knew I had to change uh, things in my life to survive. Today, Steve Corson has committed his life to drug research and to educating teens on the dangers of steroid use. He is a living example to the football players he coaches. It's not worth it. If the way you can look with steroids, if you just work hard at it, you can look that way anyway. And it's not worth messing up your body. If this team has enough morals and they believe in themselves enough that they don't, they don't feel that they need anything like steroids because in a lot of ways, steroids could be associated with cheating. The word that we emphasize the most is win. But the word that's the most important is fun. Obviously, our society wants a winner. But uh, I think there's a lot of ways that you can win on the football field other than just on the scoreboard. Ben Johnson, Lyle Alzado, Steve Corson. All three started young. They believed they were invincible. All three have had their regrets because of drugs called steroids. Thanks, Hicks. Earlier this year, Lyle Alzado died from a brain tumor. Alzado believed the steroids caused his illness, but some doctors disagreed. Regardless, just about every doctor in the country agrees steroids can be bad news. Well, that's it for this week. We'll leave you with a special goodbye from Northeastern Middle School in Manchester, Pennsylvania. See ya.